Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King podcast. We're doing a second part. Yep, part two. On decisions. Yes. First part, just to give a bit of a um, summary to that, we brought a verse from Deuteronomy 30. Yep. And God was speaking about that if they walk in his ways, they would receive blessings and life. Yeah. But if they um, walk in other ways and follow idols or other gods or their own, their own lifestyle, mm -hmm. They basically bring in curses and they bring in death into their lives. Yes. And we use an example of um, Adam, how he was making one bad decision after another, trying to cover up. It was his way of covering mm -hmm. up. But the, he didn't recognize that he couldn't hide away from God mm -hmm. and his excuses would not stand against God. Yeah. Right. So God could see through all that. That's why the Bible encourages us that if we if we sin or make certain bad decisions, that we can always come back to him. Yes. Right? We can always come back and receive restoration, receive healing. Yeah. And, and that's what God is all about. God is there to give a second chance. Yes. Many of us, it's like, it's no <clears throat> longer a second chance. It's like one millionth chance. I got, God is so gracious. He's keep on coming after me he's he's helping me he's guiding me he's restoring me <clears throat> and that's what we need in god we without his grace without his love we are doomed we are yeah yeah um well why don't we start this with having a certain attitude mm. if you look at james chapter 4 james uh james chapter 4 he's rebuking the believers right in regards to them having uh, wars, fights, and they have that desire, that pleasure of, of envy, of disunity, division. Yeah. Right? And he's saying, where does all that come from? Mm. And he speaks about that coming from their own flesh. And James is asking them to have an attitude of repentance. Right? He wants them to weep. Um, I, I read um, I read that just to 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 share in verse four he's saying adulterers and adulteresses do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God whoever therefore wants to be friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God or do you think that the scripture uh, the scripture says in vain the spirit who dwells in us yearn jealously but he he but sorry but he gives more grace therefore he says god resists the proud but gives grace to the humble yeah so i think it's very important when it comes to recognizing our decisions whether we've made bad or good decisions is to have humility in that is that to have humility in that because in the first part we spoke about that if you make bad decisions come to god but then would God receive you? And God is faithful to receive you if you come in humility. humility. So if you come in that sense of pride and saying, well, God, I don't really believe I'm wrong, but the Bible says I'm wrong, or my Christian brother says I'm wrong, but I'm not convinced of it. You know, having that sense of pride in the in the sense of saying, yeah, that's I'm, I'm not in the wrong. I can never be wrong. I'm always making the right decisions. God is not going to accept that. But if we come in yeah. humility saying, God, I might not recognize my wrong, but I could be wrong. And I want to seek repentance of that. And if I am wrong, please, I want you to open up my eyes to this. I want to have the wisdom, which is interesting in James 1. Yeah. James is saying, hey, if anyone's lacking wisdom, pray and God will give you wisdom. Yes. God, could you give me wisdom? Could you give me discernment to recognize whether I'm doing that is wrong or not. And sometimes we don't want to pray that because yeah. we want to prolong that bad decision. We want to prolong that bad habit in our life. We want to keep it around for a bit longer mm -hmm. and then come to God and pretend that, God, I've just had an epith epiphany, right? Yeah. I can now recognize my own sin, my own habits, my bad decision, and I'm feeling the consequences of it. I want to stop. You've already lived and we're satisfied in that desire. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah, I think, like you said, um, we have to come with a spirit of humility. And, and we see how much God hates pride pride and proud people that are proud. Um, we see that from the beginning, before even humans were created, you see how Lucifer, because of his pride, he was cast out of heaven. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. He was the guardian cherub. He had... He was adorned with jewels. He was, he was, uh, you know, delightful to the eyes because of of how good he was, and you know, he was there in the throne room of God, and and yet, he God had to cast him out because, his pride, corrupted him. It changed him, to being something detestable in the eyes of God, and so that he does, he doesn't get destroyed because he cannot be in the presence of God. God cast him out. I'll be honest. To me, I, I see that as a mercy to him. You know, I don't see that as just a punishment. It, it is a punishment, but it's also a mercy. Otherwise, he would he wouldn't survive in the presence of God the way he was. Uh, he could not. So, and then he had a choice. He could have humility and acknowledge his mistakes and just spend his life in exile and that's about it. But he chose to corrupt and go against God and rebel and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, you hurt me, so I will do my best to hurt you. I cannot create, but I will corrupt your creations. So you see that attitude of self-destruction. And I see that sometimes in, in Christians that have a pride. That when they fall and they go away from God and they stop being Christians... They have that self-destructive streak. Yeah. I I mean, even personally, uh, when I became a Christian, and you know how we, you say that I was born again, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we forget <clears throat> when we say I was born again is you're a newborn, right? Yeah. You're still growing in your character. One of the things that if, if someone would point out something in my life, it's easy. it was easy for me to go on self-defense mode, mm -hmm. right? But as you grow in your faith and you recognize that, wow, there's a lot of things to work on in my life, that you start to have a different attitude when it comes to people um, kind of correcting you. And that attitude is, is part of what humility is yeah. in you, right? You must think, okay, I might not see it. This person might be able to see something in my life. Yeah. Because sometimes... You know, you're so occupied with a lot of things that sometimes you might not notice things in your life. But then there are other believers in your life, Christians, who love you and care for you. They're like, oh, I can recognize that in, in that person. So it, in a loving way, and it is my duty to bring it out to them, right? And confrontation is it's not, it's not the most comfortable thing for a lot of people. But in Christianity, if you love your brother, you know, you, you would tell them that. Not because yeah. you want to put them down, right? Uh, I just want to help them. Look, you, you have a, you, you know, you, you struggle with, say, swearing, right? You have bad language. Ha, ha, ha. No, it's not the case. It's more like, hey, you're a Christian. Um, you don't want to bless God and curse men, right? Um, out of that fountain, let it be godly words, right? Speak with grace speak with goodness, speak mm -hmm. holy words. And then the other person will be encouraged. We're like, oh, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. But sometimes if we lack humility, um, it, it's it's very hard to ac accept that. Yeah, Cri um, the criticism. Criticism. I know, I know a lot of Christians nowadays would be like, for example, let's say you're trying to correct me on something that you see is wrong in my life just to help me um, so I could be edified. And then I say, oh, you shouldn't be looking at this speck in my eye. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you've yeah. seen those Christians, right? I, I've seen them. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I understand. But that verse is clearly talking about hypocrites. Yeah. Hypocrites. I'm, I'm not <laughs> trying to do this to insult you or even to put you down. I'm genuinely doing it for your sake. But it's your choice. Yeah. It, it's funny because you know how in the previous episode we spoke about that you can quote scripture like the devil or you could scream quote scripture like jesus yeah just depends which one you yeah, are what's your what's your motive yeah it's yeah it's it's very important to have that <clears throat> attitude it's, it's to come with grace and you know as we said that 
when you amend for those bad decisions, right? And and you start doing the right thing mm -hmm. by everyone else, um, you, you start to see the blessings. Yes. It, it turns from a curse and death to a blessing, to a blessing in life. Yeah. For example, and, and we've been friends for a long time. I'm yeah. sure we've upset each other, right? 100%. A lot of times. But then we know that the right thing to do is... Make amends. To, yeah, to make amends. And when we come humbly and say, well, I've sinned against you, Emil, sorry, I apologize. I was a bit upset or, you know, it wasn't the best of days for me. It's okay, I forgive um, you. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you could forgive me. <laughs> that bad decision is is no longer there. Its consequences yeah. are, you know, gone to the back seat. Yeah. And we've restored our relationship with each other. Because yeah. you see some people bringing it up like, oh, Barrett, like, but you said you forgave me. Why are you bringing it up? Or like what I did back then, mm. right? Especially yeah, yeah. to use against yeah. you. It's like, that's not a Christian thing to do. You don't see Jesus doing that. Remember that sin I asked that I forgave you for last time? Remember that? Oh, that would be That's terrifying. what the devil does. <laughs> that's what the devil does. Yeah. Literally. He's the You're, accuser. He's, he's the, the accuser. reminder. So why are we being like him? Yeah. So we should, when, when we forgive our brothers like Christ, we have to wipe it away. It's gone. It's finished. Mm. Right? Now, of course, if they doing this, like, for example, let's say, you hurt me with the insult. Yeah. And I said, hey, brother, that hurt me. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I'm sorry. I'll forgive you. And then you do it again. The same thing. <laughs> I'm like, hey, man, you remember what I forgave you for it? And like, why are you bringing up the past? But you're doing it again. Like, it's, yeah. it's the same mistake. You know, you, you know, it's just like, did you really repent from it? Did you really mean you're sorry? Because mm -hmm. it's not that I've forgotten it. It's that you didn't mean you're sorry. Yeah. Clearly. But all right, I forgive you. I forgive you again. Okay, third time. Like it's you. Know, you know what I mean. Like there, there are times where it's fair enough. But most of the time, it's no. I'm genuinely sorry. But why are you bringing it up? If that was a one-time thing, it never happened again. You forgave me supposedly. Mm. Why is it still in your heart? And sometimes True. it stays. And sometimes we have to ask God to remove that because we humans, we we have our limitations. <laughs> so, I guess the. <laughs> The idea behind it is have the attitude of Christ. Amen. When Christ forgives us, he doesn't bring it back. Nope. He doesn't accuse us of it. Mm -hmm. um, his grace, his love covers it. As Amen. the Bible says, right? Love covers a multitude of sins. Yes. So if God does that in our lives, I think we can be encouraged to do the same thing. And yes. Jesus gives the parable where one of the servants he was owing his master so much money that he could not pay it in a lifetime. His master found the grace in his heart to forgive him. But then when that servant went out, he found some other, other person. He owed him way less money. He held him and he's like, where is my money? Right? Sometimes we struggle to forgive people because we don't recognize what it took Jesus to forgive us. And the moment we start to recognize, I've made so many bad decisions, like countless against God, and he's forgiven all of them. What is one bad decision that my brother does against me that should bring a division between me and him? It's the hubris, the, the, the pride in us that's stopping us from forgiving. Instead of being humble and saying, I am less than Christ, and Christ forgave me. You know, mm. and thinking outside of ourselves, we are kind of stuck in, in thinking only for ourselves. Like the devil, yes, yeah. childish and immature behavior, to be honest. But unfortunately, that's who we are yeah. as humans. Um, that's why we need Christ to. That's why we always have to be, you know, always be living in the spirit and not in the flesh. And that's why we have to surround ourselves with people that are like-minded, people that are that are good in character, because bad company corrupts good character. So if we surround ourselves with evil most likely we're going to be more likely to choose evil. Mm. Whereas if we surround ourselves with good, we are more likely to choose good. If we surround ourselves with people that are gracious and, and show a good example of what Jesus is and who he is and how he forgives, if we see that in their lives. We're more likely to be like, wow. So that's what it is. Mm. I've read it in the book, but that's how you live it. Yeah. Now I see it. Now I understand it. I don't want to imitate it. Whereas if you always see evil, evil, evil in your life and you're surrounded by it and that's all you know, it's very hard to put the Bible into action. 
because yeah. you don't see it in your life. If you don't surround yourself with good fellowship, with good people, good, you know, God-fearing people, you're more likely to not be wise and God-fearing yourself. Yeah. Um, I like what Ephesians 4 says, <clears throat> verse 2 and 3. He's saying, with all lowliness <clears throat> and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, Yes. endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. So this whole idea that we need to be gracious toward, towards each other, and we can do this in lowliness and humility, bearing with one another, being, um, as he says, long-suffering, having this attitude of saying, I'm with a person that is not perfect. You might be a Christian, and you, you are striving to be Christ-like, but you're not Christ. No. So therefore, you making a mistake, it's understandable, and it's normal. But you hold me accountable. Yeah. We, and you, we, we hold each other accountable, and we push each other. We don't accuse each other and put our, ourselves down. We know the devil. No. We help each other because we're brothers in yeah. Christ. We say, hey, brother, you've fallen. Clearly, you've fallen. You might not realize it, but you have. Let me help you pick pick yourself back up again. Let me assist you. If you are, oh, you've injured your foot. Let me assist you on this journey, on this walk, until you get better. Until you can walk on your own. I'm there for you. That's what brothers in Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ are there for. Right? To help each other. And eventually, when you get to a point where you're capable, you help the person that's mm. not. You're also, it, it's, it's a cycle. It's, it's a cycle of good. We saw how there's a cycle of evil. Yeah. This is a cycle of good, of good decisions, right? You know, you see David, how he made cycles of evil decisions, mm. right? He he slept with a married woman. She had a child, killed her husband. Yeah. You know, and those were a series of bad decisions. It, it, it kind of kept rolling and got bigger and bigger and worse and worse. Same thing with good decisions. Yeah. Right? It just keeps rolling and rolling, keeps getting bigger and better. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's just, you got to choose life over death. You just got to choose the right path it's it's and friends help good friends yeah help. It, it's crazy that we're talking about this topic you start to think of so many examples so many examples right so many examples like wait this guy made this bad decision hold on like a few verses later and he's making another bad decision and another bad decision yep. another bad yep. decision yep. and sometimes so the people around you they can keep on encouraging you to make these decisions mm -hmm. and it might be sound like wow, this is unbiblical, it's so harsh. No, it's actually very biblical. And it's, it's very prevalent. important for you. Yeah. Um, I like what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 5. He's saying, I write to you in my epistle, and that's verse 9 and always, um, not to keep company with sexually immoral people. And he continues, and he shares with other, a few other people in that list. Mm -hmm. It's the idea that, if there is a person in your life, and as Emil shared a Bible verse that bad company corrupts good character, is that if there are people in your life that are bad influence in your life, that are pushing you away from Christ, rather getting closer to Christ, you need to make that decision of cutting them off. And obviously, you don't just make it out of the blue. Yeah. You need these people to understand that say, look, I love you. I'm your friend. I'm going to keep on praying for you. But you're yeah. always leading me to these bad decisions. I might be already struggling with certain habits or sin. I might be trying to get away from my drug addiction, from my drinking addiction, from my porn addiction. And these people just keep on bringing me back into these sins. Now, do I really want to keep their company? Or do what 2 Corinthians 6 say? Do not be equally yoked with the unbelievers. You want a friend, you don't want an enemy. Yeah, you, you want to have that separation. And what's interesting that a lot of people don't, don't recognize is that by making that decision of saying, even though they are a bad influence in my life and I keep on making bad decisions because of them being around me, I'm still going to be their friend. 100%, now, now, just from a distance. Yeah. Oh, no, as in like, as in still be their friends, like that closeness. What does James say? Friendship with the world is en enmity with God. 
So if you decide to continue be their friend, you're separating yourself from God. Yeah. But if you say, you know what, I'm going to separate myself from evil, and that doesn't only include sin, but also includes the bad people in my mm. life, then I'm connecting myself. I'm getting closer to God. I'm united with God. Yeah. So you have a choice to make. First John chapter 2, 15 to 17, it speaks about that God and the world are enemies. Yes. Right? And you have to get to choose. Now, if you want to choose the world, right, the lust of the God. eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, then you'll perish with the world, right? Because you're following the world and the world is being is perishing. So yeah. therefore, the, it's the same outcome. You'll perish. Curse and blessing, right? Yeah. But says the one who does the will of God will abide in him forever. Amen. Blessing and life. Yeah. It just brings us back to Deuteronomy 30. Yeah, that's right. It's all it's all connected. Um so that 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 was that 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 was pretty amazing because you see you see God's mercy in in everything, especially in, in the people we surround ourselves with. You can see God's mercy in them and you see how God is working in them, especially if they're good people that you're surrounding yourself with. So I think that's why it's it's mentioned so many times like that we have to surround ourselves with good people. Mm -hmm. And the importance of friends, I cannot stress it enough. It, it's crazy how much that can help you. Because sometimes you don't even realize yourself that you're doing the wrong thing. Like genuinely, you, you don't mean to do it. You just don't realize that you're doing it wrong. You're just out of ignorance, not out of arrogance. And your friends can point it out. And especially if you're a humble person, you can, oh, wow, I... I I never thought of it that way. It's it's mind opening. Thank you for that, and you edify yourself, and it helps you so much. It makes you grow as a Christian. That, that that's why you know you see a lot of preachers and pastors saying you have to go to church. You have to go to church. It's it's not a matter of like literally just going to a building. It's just a building. It's a matter of having fellowship. It's a matter of surrounding yourself with people that are like minded as you, that love Christ like you. That's the whole point of it. It's it's not a matter of a ritualistic thing no 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 it, it's it's a matter of your being together with brothers and sisters in christ for the same purpose for a common goal which is christ and you're helping each other grow right that's what it's that's what the church is for that's what it, it, it's to, so we can worship god together so we can have that common goal which is christ together and help each other you know go to that goal that's that's the main purpose mm. right I'll share a verse in Please. regards to what you were just sharing now. It's so important. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 3, 12 and 13. He's saying, Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Mm -hmm. So there might be people there that have that struggle, yeah. you know, that struggle of unbelief, that struggle of, you know, having some evil in your heart yeah. that's taking you away from God. But what does he say in verse 13? But exhort, meaning encourage, one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Wow. So he's saying there might be people in, in our congregation, in our Christian circle life, that might be going through that struggle, unbelief, evil heart, and they are slowly finding themselves drifting away from God. He's saying, but guess what's your responsibility? Get to encourage them daily. Yeah. Be there for them. And that's the beauty of having good company around you. Yeah. Is that even though when you are sometimes led to make a bad decision, someone's grabbing you by the shirt and saying, hold on, where are you going, where are you going with yeah. that? Come back. Come back. Open yeah. up your eyes. Be aware mm. of what's going on. And that's something that you were sharing to me um, in the morning today as we were driving. You were mm. speaking about... Uh, Samson, yeah, and yes. the irony of him, his awareness. You yeah. want to share that with us? Yeah. So, um, as we know, he made a lot of wrong decisions. He defiled him, his body. Um, he didn't keep the Nazarene vow. He took it lightly. Uh, eventually, he went with a harlot rather than a godly woman, and uh, he even let her live with him. Mm. And uh, he shared his secrets with her, even though that could jeopardize not just him but his people as well. And she used his secrets against him and, you know, his strength was taken from him. His eyes were taken from him. And in that moment where he had no sight and no, he had, his shame was evident and he was humbled. 
when his pride was gone and he was truly blind, that's when he could finally see his mistakes had consequences mm -hmm. and what those consequences were. He could see his actions, how they were wrong and how they affected him. And also how those people were now mocking God because of his wrong actions. Yeah. And of course, he we know the story he used. He, he finally understood, you know, what his purpose was. And he understood how his wrongdoings had consequences. And at that moment, regardless of his repentance, because he did repent, he genuinely regretted what he did. Mm. It was too late. The consequences True. were there. He, he's not going to get his sight back. It's yeah. finished. It's done. Um, and those people, those mockeries that they gave to God, they're still out there. So he had one choice. It's God, if it's in you, will give me strength. Yeah. True. And he took them down. And and that's a good example since we, we were talking about um, that he surrounded himself with, with evil people who were a bad influence in mm -hmm. his life. And he recognized that I am in such a shame I'm blind, I can't see. I was this one, you know, at one time, one person who was powerful, had it all, everything was going well for himself into being just a clown, basically in front of my own enemies. And that was a good lesson for him to learn. 100%. And I think we need to learn from those lessons. Yes. We don't have to be the type of people that only learn by experience. If there are people around us, say, hey, this decision will lead you in a, in a, will, will bring you into very bad consequences. It's not good for your life. It's not good for your family. It's not good for your faith. Mm -hmm. We don't have to say, hey, well, I have to live it out. I want to see it for myself. We don't want to be those Run type away, of man. people. That's very foolish attitude, yeah. immature. We need to be wise and learn even from people who have that experience. Yeah. You know, Paul says to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians 10, He's saying that, you know, we, we read about these people in the Old Testament so we can learn from them. Yeah, that's right. And, and the whole idea that if I can learn from someone's experience that might have taken him years to learn that, I can learn it in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Save me so much time on my life. Yeah, you know, th that could be a blessing. So we're, we're ending it. So you have any final thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just want to give one final message, and that oh. is... Uh, Please don't make excuses. And I know there's a thousand excuses we can come up with for our wrong decisions. But ultimately, you know, if we have that hubris where we believe that we are right and we change the Bible to suit our needs and oh, disregard this passage because of reason X, reason whatever, um, to suit our needs, to suit our desires, if we come with that mentality, that mentality only leads us to ruins. And that's why we need to surround ourselves with people that are holy, the people that are trying to live their life the way Jesus did. Even though they're not going to be like Jesus, but they, they're on the path, just like Paul was, to being like Christ, to being Christ-like. And we need to be walking on that same path as them. We might, not, we might need to catch up to them, but they'll be there helping us, especially if they're true believers. They're going to be there for you to help you. And I encourage you to find friends. And if you don't have any, pray for for God to give you some. Pray, God, I need brothers and sisters that will help me get closer to you. And if you have bad friends and you're trying your best and they're not changing, and sometimes you have to distance yourself from them and pr still pray for them, still love them. If you see them, hey, how are you? You know, they're not strangers to you. They know you. They're not someone you hate. It's they. St you still love them. They're still your acquaintances. Uh, so still friends in a sense. And that's what I meant by they're my friends, but I'm distant from them. Yeah. Friends from yeah. a distance. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's that's we still have a friendly attitude. We still love them. We still show them the love of Christ and hope that they change. Cool. No worries. So when you come at a crossroad and you think, should I make a godly decision or a foolish one? Guess what? You have to choose life or a blessing, death or a curse. Yep. God bless you all. We'll see you next time. Take, Take care. care.